down arrow, you can click on that. And again, you'll be able to customize these as you were. Now again, this is located above the ribbon by default. If you right-click the mouse, you can change the location to be below the ribbon, or you can choose to minimize it so it hides if it's not in use. And again, just a quick tip here, if you right-click on any ribbon command, you can add that automatically to your quick access toolbar. Again, these are powerful, powerful shortcuts that you can go ahead and use, um, again, uh, as a regular basis. Now, we've clicked on the Office button. Again, I invite you to go ahead and click with me. The Office button replaces the File Menu commands. Let's take a quick peek at those and see what's underneath the Office button. Of course, you can create a new template or a presentation. And those, if you check it on that library right now, they've expanded those templates. And boy, does that give you a running start, whether you're creating something for the office, doing something for the PTA, or doing a flyer for a tag sale. There are expanded templates there with vivid colors, expanded galleries. You're going to find a wow for even the most seasoned presenter. Somebody who's been using this now for 30 years, you're going to find that you've got some new ideas on how to spice up your existing communications. Of course, you can open or close. A quick note here on saving. We'll talk later on about this, but if you click your Save button, that will save it in the new style or file extension. That's going to be a PPTX. A Save As, you have options for not only saving it in a compatible format. We have to be careful. Our new presentations aren't as compatible going backwards in earlier versions of PowerPoint. They may have to download a patch to be able to open yours if you don't use some of these other save options. New to here, again, save as. We have a PDF or some read-only options. We're going to talk later in the session about why that's important. Again, of course, we have our print and our preview functions hiding here under the Office button. But I encourage you to go ahead and click on the Send button. Again, if you're, you're looking at this while I am, the distribution here options have improved. The pack and go is no longer with us, but we have, again, an expanded opportunity to distribute our, our presentations here for email. And again, we have a variety of options of saving that as an attachment. Go ahead and click on the publish option. Again, remember our pack and go. We have two other options now instead, under send or now publish. You can still package this as a CD. You can publish those libraries. Again, you can send it to a blog or any other distribution. And as you're looking at that publish command, again, your create handouts in Microsoft Word is also hiding under there. Quick tip there, don't be afraid to try that. And again, if you're looking at your Office button, at the bottom underneath those options or your most recent documents, you're going to find a PowerPoint Options button. I encourage you to click on that. Again, that's where some of your default options are hiding. And that's where this replaces the Tools menu. And again, your options used to exist in the old format. And this is where you can change some of the popular, the proofing, or the Save options right here from the menu. And again, this is found under the Office button. Now again, our ribbons offer one-click access. Why is that important? Well, it means you can spend less time digging through menus and toolbars, and you can spend more time designing and communicating your message. Well, what you're looking at on a usual, regular basis is you're looking at some primary tabs. And we have, again, if you look across, seven that will stay up on your screen regardless of the presentation you're working from. Left to right, again, home, insert, design, animations. Those represent your tabs. And again, those are your major functions as you're working across creating a new PowerPoint. And again, within every single tab, you have a set of groups or commands that are organized by task within each tab. A group name, as an example, would be Home Tab, and then Clipboard Group, Slides Group, Font Group, and Paragraph, as an example. For some of your groups, you'll find a launcher arrow. My mouse is pointing to it. If you click on that, you might find one of the old menus from 2003. And again, that just helps you, again, give you another way of using the commands on the ribbon. They're organized by groups for a reason, folks. They put them together in logical orders. They're meant to be easy. You have your commands now at your disposal, right at your fingertips. Now, you'll notice that 2007, you may see some buttons that are grayed out. That means, in context, you might have to select the slide text in order to activate those ribbons. Don't be afraid to do that. 
If it doesn't work the first time, try and click within your slide or somewhere on your screen to try and activate that command. Now, in other cases, I have an example on the right-hand side of a contextual tab. And again, just by definition, that tab is in context. That means if I click or insert an object. As an example, we use clip art. We use graphics to help communicate our message in PowerPoint. If I insert an audio file, a header or footer, anything I add to my slide is going to be considered something new to my slide. Well, that's going to trigger what's called a contextual tab. And how I edit or change that object will be, again, found under these tabs, such as a format, a design, a layout. Again, these tabs are meant to be extra. They're only turned on when you activate that object. So don't be afraid, again, if you're trying to change that picture, maybe you want to change the fill or an effect, you have to select it. Try clicking on it to go ahead and make that work. Again, a reminder, if you need to minimize that ribbon or if it disappeared by accident, right click your mouse on that ribbon and you'll go ahead and find that without any problem. Again, the ribbon represents one of the biggest changes for 2007. Now, I like to say 2007 has given us the wow. And you don't have to waste a lot of time doing it. Now, what you see here is you see your ribbon, but it's organized around the continuum of how you have to design and work within PowerPoint. You're in the creation stage. Folks, this is meant to be design-oriented. Use the power of visual effects here. Use the power and edit and format, of course. You have more tools. Those are going to be found here on the Home tab. And again, contextual, you'll find some of those on the Format tab. But again, don't be afraid to use that. If you add it to the slide, again, usually that's enhancing your slides. It's adding something that's going to make your message pop. Don't be afraid to try audio. Use video. It's become much, much easier to incorporate that in, to test it within your PowerPoint. And again, for those adult users or, or clients that you have, everybody processes information differently. PowerPoint becomes one of the most effective tools for communicating a message now because of, again, it's become easier. And you can use all of the senses, visual, audio, to go ahead and communicate your message across. Don't be afraid to use that. Again, your insert tab, your design tab, now become your tools. Those tools in the toolbox become opportunities for you to capture their attention using a variety of different ways. And again, those two tabs become instrumental for how you enhance and again embellish your design of your, your slides. Now we come to the more powerful tool. How do we engage? Maybe you're up at a presentation, you're in front of the industry, you're at a conference. We love those trade shows. You better be using PowerPoint. You have to use 07 because your ability to animate. Animation should be used in a balance. But again, you're using it to capture people's attention. You're